enough is called Main Street. Why, a chicken could cross the street without danger to limb or feather. Every day is Dog's Day. Animals aren't just pets in Fernville. They're your bread and butter. Why, Charles Stanley, the vet, he's a very important man. The farmers look to Charlie to keep their cows and their horses alive and healthy. At the quaint old schoolhouse, Elise Winters teaches the very young of Fernville their reading, writing, and arithmetic. But not to the tune of the hickory stick. There's a newspaper in Fernville. Not just a small town newspaper, but an important one. Made so by editor Tom Forbes, whose editorials, so rich in philosophy, so rustic in simplicity, are reprinted nationally. Right now, he's waving to Cheever Snow. Cheever owns the hotel. It's homey and comfortable. A genial body face is Cheever's, benevolent to a fault, fastidious. Oh, Cheever's. Then there's the courthouse, custodian of civic rights, guarding the jail within its portals. A lonely man, Dan Katie. <laughs> For there are no problems of vice, traffic, or crime in Fernville. It's 4,231 persons are all law-abiding, all save one, who, cloaking his identity under an assumed name and personality, is in your midst. Look, find, and expose Jimmy Valentine. Titus Zippers brings you the latest news and clues on the Fernville Gold Rush. $10,000 may be yours, so hop to it. $10,000? And Valentine's living right here in Fernville. I've turned in my grandmother for $10,000. <laughs> Seeker, I'm Mike Jason. I whipped up this contest. You did? All I want to do is root around your old files. It might be an item. It's in my files. It's none of your business. My radio contest can put this whistle stop on the map. She's right. Quiet. Shh. On the map, hmm? On whose map? Coney Island's on the map, too. Let me show you something. Now, here's Fernville. What does it mean to you? Just a lot of surveyor's tracings? Now, you take this street. Here lives old Mrs. Green. Been taken in Washington for 15 years. Her son's now a flyer in the Air Corps. Fernville's mighty proud of that boy. Son, why throw a lot of dirty dishwater at people like that? How about Valentine? Maybe. Maybe he lives in Fernville. Maybe he's settled his debt to society. Maybe he's a good friend to Mrs. Green. And sure, sure he is. He's brought Fernville the first high-class publicity break they ever had. You think that's good? Did you see those people quarreling out there? They've been friends for 30 years. That's what the limelight is doing for this town. Fernville will never get out in any pants unless you wake up. When you woke up greed in these people, you killed the best thing they had. Human decency. Yes, but he's right. Why not shoot some pep into the old rag? Let's headline this contest. Oh, you don't agree with the policy of the paper. No, I don't. It's 
about as modern as that sofa. Well, you know what you're talking about? I'm 19. I can think for myself. You're 18 and you're fired. Fired? Yes. And I'd move heaven and earth to get you and your blood money hunt out of here. Now, I can't order you out of the town, but I can order you out of my office. So get out. Both of you. Too. <clears throat> well, it's tough, kid, tough. But if you teach you one thing, never agree with me. Gee whiz! You can't just run out on me! Well, that's life, babe. It picks you up and it lets you down. What, already? Time, I'll have to order you off of my property. Is this your father? Yes. Isn't it terrible? No, it serves you right. And you deserve to have a pest for a daughter. I'm just a gullible guy from the big city, trying to eke out a meager living through this Valentine contest. All I ask is to look in your moldy old files, and what do I get? I get taken in by a couple of Hoosier hotshots. But I really wanted to help. From now on, I'm working alone. Yeah, but Mr. Jason... You stay away from me! You, I'd cuss you out. <laughs> Nosy, ain't he? Wanting to look in your files. Only refused him out of ornering us. There's nothing in him that'd help him. There's a picture of me and a write-up he gave me when I started in business as a gardener. <laughs> that was a big event, but uh, I hardly think Jason would find that pertinent. The piece said I had red hair. <laughs> Was it that long ago? I just told him I used to have black hair. I'd like to get that item, if you don't mind. Well, you know your way around the office. Sure. I can get in tonight. 
From now on, be a little careful. Feeling safe for so many years has made me kind of careless. I know, Pinky. Pop, is it true what he says? Uh, who, Mickey? Pinky. He says right no Jimmy Valentine. He does? Yes, Pop. Is that true? Well, he ought to know, son. He ought to know. There <laughs> we go. Where's my Jason? How should I know? Well, you're under 80. What room's he in? I don't even know him. That guy must be slipping. Yes, sir? Uh, Mike Jason's room, please. 24. I'll phone down about my bag. She's his heart, Rob. Oh. Tails. Too bad. Had to get him. What's the matter? We're making too much noise? Flip it again. The law of averages has got to take. Sorry, boss. Get to. <laughs> Haiti Lamar. Mm, you are hoping not get to. What brought you up here, anyhow? The boss sent me to see that you stopped philandering and tend to business. Talk about it. I haven't seen a good-looking girl since I've been in town. No? What about those two beauties in the lobby? You liar. <clears throat> oh, say, that's my gambling quarter. Heads, I keep it. You got it. I thought I ought to go down. Boys, you're going out. See if you can pick up Pinky, the gardener. Trail him. See where he goes. Okay, boss. And Mousy. Yeah. Tell the local bells I won't be out to play. Mama's here. <laughs>
Your name used to be Red, huh? Well, who, who are you? Oh, me, I don't matter. The name I want you to remember is Scarlatti. Well, what? Why Scarlatti? I ain't never forgot him. All my life I've been cringing, starving, making jokes because I've been afraid to steal. I've been a yellow laughing little mooch. Shaving up every ounce of guts for the time I'd need him. He's getting closer, Red. Tony Scalotti was my old man. He burned in a chair. And I'm getting closer to the guy that let him burn. Jimmy Valentine. Oh, Valentine! Which one of you guys is Jimmy Valentine? Valentine had nothing to do with it. It was Jimmy Valentine. Oh, you, you've got to believe me, son. Oh, I... It's Jimmy Valentine. Your father got jammed in his own trick. It was Jimmy Valentine. I don't know why he's Valentine. Right. Turn around, baby. Don't faint. I've never fainted. You know. Ah. Boss, it's you. I, I saw the light and I... What's the matter? Is she out? Yeah. So is he for keeps. Uh, boss, how'd you get here so quick? Well, he, he told me to follow him, and I've been waiting out in front. Who came in or out? Well, nobody. Well, that doesn't make sense. The killer must have gone out the front. If you were out there watching... Well, it was. I was uh, watching with... Well, maybe I wasn't for a couple of minutes. There was a pretty little sparrow walking past me, and I... Who was she? Uh, well, it was uh, the dame that makes with the fingernails at the hotel. The dame would have to come by at a time like this. Go on out there and get on that phone. Call the police. What well, I'd like to know is... How did Pinky get in here? Oh, can't fool me. With this key. That's it. It's my key. Tom, did you give it to him? No. Oh, how did he get it? I don't know. Well, Jason, we're on the map now. You high pressure this into the limelight. I just saw Pinky. He's lying in it. He looks calm, a little sorry. Sorry, I guess, that you ever came to Fernville. Should we let us stand? Well, just a minute, Mr. Forbes. Does this match in size and form the clipping that was taken from your paper? Mm. What difference does it make? Might make some. Coming, Bonnie? I'll be right along, Pop. You and me and stay in town, both of you. All right, Chief, glad to. You'll need some help. Yeah. It's gonna be tough to crack. You're out on your own recognizance. It says here that Pinky had red hair. He was Valentine's partner, all right. You took that clipping. Sure. But that's a secret just between us, baby. Us? Well, then that means that, that you and I are... Wait for me outside, will you, Mousy? It means that when I find the man that sent Pinky here tonight, I'll have the murderer, and he'll be Valentine. That's just the guy I'm after. Well, why are you taking it so much to heart? Well, why not? Killing a nice old guy like Pinky. After all, he could have been somebody's mother. <laughs> Poor old Pinky. Oh, well, maybe we can square things for him. Who did he work for besides your father? Well, um, he worked for Charlie Stanley, Ira Means, uh, Gus Doan, Kiefer Snow, and, and old man Oldershot. Yeah, well, that makes six. Now, I want to get their fingerprints. I can take care of Stanley. And, and I'll get the others. Good. You get them to handle something, but don't just pinch yourself at all. No. Oh, but there's only five and... Oh, I... I... Yes, you want my father's, too. Oh, no, 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 of course not. 
uh, just get the other five. My pop's about as full as they come. Thanks for seeing that way, Mike. Hey, she'll be halfway home. I've got a job. Cheever Snow at the front of the hotel, please. Hello? Hello, Charlie. Jason just got my fingerprints. Never mind how, he just got them. How about you? Of course I'm sure. Wouldn't I know? Wait a minute. Bonnie Fulton's in here and got me to sign a petition of some kind. Then slipped it into a net button. Do? Well, what do you think I'm going to do? I'm seeing Tom Forbes. For 15 years, I've been living decent and straight. And what I've earned, I'm entitled to. I know. What are we going to do? Run away? Hide? Start all over again? i got a wife and two kids to think about. they got a place in Fernville, Tom. For 11 years, I haven't made a move. Unless I thought it would set an example of the children in this town. What if they know that they've learned their ABCs, the golden rule, from an ex-convict? What will it do to them? You ought to take Jason for the trip. Give him a good dumping. Talking receivers. Those things are behind you. Are they behind us? Yes, are they? That's up to you. Warden James told you that. But I promise that if you pitched in honestly, I'd see you got an even break, and I'll do it somehow. But how, Jimmy? Jimmy. It's a long time since anybody called me then. And high time I answered to it. I've been wearing this kind of clothes so long, I almost thought they fitted me. Go home now, all of you. Jason isn't going to do anything to you. Then why is Bonnie working with him? Bonnie? Yes, getting my fingerprints and others. Bonnie. Yes. I see. I think I'd better go see Jason alone. I'll go home. Yeah. Please, trust me. Snow was our friend, a good friend. So was Pinky. Pop, there's something rotten in this town, and well, it's got to be rooted out. Like uh, Jimmy Valentine? Well, he's suspect number one for my money. Here's my chance to prove that I'm editor Tom Forbes' daughter. I want to get that story, and I want to write it. I want to show Mike Jason. How does Mike I... Jason come into this? Well, he's the end of the story. He's it. I, I can't give you any orders. I practically let you bring yourself up, and you've done a good job, too. But don't spoil it now. Mike Jason is not the man. He doesn't know the meaning of quality and decency. In my heart, Pop, I, I know that somehow. He's on the wrong road, darling, and you can't change him. He's it, Pop. And I love you very much, too. Hey, what you two gabbing about so serious? Seriously, Mickey. Okay, Lee. I'm keeping that date, Pop. What are you talking so serious for? Huh, Pop? Huh? Oh, we're going to 
just discussing how to dispose of my case, and I uh, wish the Phantom or Superman were around. Gosh, the hell up! You want the guy knocked off? <laughs> just about, son. Just about. to call the police. I can handle this. I'm referring to these fingerprints. Well, why the police? I thought we were working alone, Mike. Well, alone with Mike, it's always wise to have the cops handy. Look, I can't check these myself. I have to be sent to Washington. But... Yeah, but don't worry. Not even Katie will know whose prints belong to whom. See? And I'm the only guy that knows which number belongs to what name. Well... Let me have the chief of police. Hello, Chief. This is Mike Jason speaking. Put your shoes on and hop over here. Yes, yes. Just as soon as I can find them. Say, if you want me, you come over here. I have a perfectly stunning line of fingerprints today, Chief. I think you'd better come over. Okay, Peaches, I'll be waiting. What do I do now? Isn't it time for your nap? If you think you can run me out of here... Are you moving in? Yes. Something wonderful has happened to Mike and me. Our understanding is complete. And in the pattern of our lives, you are definitely omitted. Oh, you're cute. Oh, now that spoils it. Oh, never mind, kid. I'll get you a rematch. Mike, I'm scared. Oh, forget it. You've got me here to protect you. Not for long. Somebody's after you. I'm just coming to see you. Coming or leaving? Mr. Forbes, Miss Arden. Miss Arden, Mr. Forbes. Good afternoon. Hello, Bonnie. Hello, Pop. Well, speak right up, Mr. Forbes. Cleo's my boss and Bonnie's my partner. Jason. All right, Jason, what's on your mind? What about this? Hey, what's going on here? I can explain everything, Chief. You see, I was sitting here among my beloved books, making a time bomb with all of us. You're alone. With fingerprints. Let's see them. Here you are, Chief. Among these, you'll find your murderer. One of those sets belongs to Jimmy Valentine. All you have to do is have him checked. Whose prints are they? Uh, 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 uh. You send them to Washington and have them identified. When they come back, you let me know, then I'll let you know. You know, Jason, you shouldn't be running around loose. Neither should Pinky's murderer. You want to see me, Mr. Forbes? I was looking for Bonnie. Ready to go home? Yes, Papa. Please be careful. I will. Darn that freckle. <laughs> Why, you big slob. Who shot? What happened? What are you... Well, you said you were through with it anyway. I'll say I'm through. I'm a nervous wreck. Oh, I'll get shaved in a barber shop. Call a barber and tell him I'm coming down. Wait a minute. Not the barber. What's the matter with me? The manicurist. The ma manic? Yes. Oh, boy, she can't shave you. Of course she can't shave me, but she can help me. She was outside the newspaper office when Pinky was killed. You saw her? You said so. Oh, well, it was a pretty dark interview. Well, it would have made a dark that you couldn't follow her. Well, now go ahead, call her and tell her to come up here. Yeah. Hello? Uh, 
Give me the manicures, please. Lutisha Hinko, manicurist. Room 24, Mr. Mark Jason. Uh, can you come up here right away? Can I? Well, I should hope to say. <laughs> oh, you can't? Oh, all right. Thank you very much. We'll have to go downstairs. Oh, all right, let's go downstairs. Oh, somebody's using it, boss. The stairway's quicker. <laughs> oh, all right. Where's the manicures? She'll be back. Now, look, boss, why don't you get shaved while you're waiting? Yeah, well, I might as well, Marcy. Sure. Free? No. Cost you a quarter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that fixed one of these days. <laughs> Say, Marcy, I thought you... Uh, still look like a boiled owl. Well, what do you want for a quarter? Dimples? <laughs> <laughs> Get you so winded. Oh, I, uh, I was, uh... Why, Mousy. Oh. Say, stick around and see if you can grab that manicure when she comes back. Okay, boys. Oh, hello, early bird. Oh, my. Say you have a broadcast at four. Wouldn't you like to routine the material? Oh, no, that kind of stuff's only for Orson Welles. I'll just ad lib something. It's me, Bonnie! There's your early bird, you worm. Uh, just a minute, Bonnie. Say, look, be a good scout, will you? And go hide in the... Uh, Stop shoving me around! Oh, I know, but that... Be... Uh, uh, be patient, Bonnie. Say, are you cold decking me for that moppet? Oh, you know better than that. But you want me to win that money, don't you? Well, this kid's got a lead on Valentine for me. You know how it is. I, I don't want to antagonize it. Oh, the things I do for you. I know you do it. <gasps> oh! Oh, hello. Hi. What took you so long? Oh, I uh, had to finish dressing. I smell perfume. Perfume? Yeah. Oh, it's me. It's me. <laughs> Ladies perfume? Ah, oh, you don't want that. Well, uh, maybe a little Chanel, you know, now Number and then. Number five? Oh, four, four and a half. Who cares? You know, a tinge here and there. Topped off with this, Gertrude. Pretty, isn't it? Ooh, where is she? Oh. That, that's Cleo Siren. You mean Siren? Then you admit it. Mike, after all, we've been to each other. How Listen, you... we haven't been anything to each other. And I think that you had better... I'm not... <laughs> Oh. Such a distrustful nature. I'm sorry, Mike. I thought...
were discovered on the scene of two crimes. Now, don't worry, Chief. I'll be around when you want me. Fingerprint identifications from Washington. That's all. You too, Wilbur. Now, Jason, I want to know the names of the men whose fingerprints you... T -t 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 you t -t -t well, where'd you get them? Well, I'd uh, like to look at this envelope first, Chief, if you don't mind. You know, Valentine's worth $10,000 to me. And to you, too, if you should happen to find him first. Then we're stalemated. The district attorney will open this envelope when he gets here tomorrow, and he'll make you identify the prints. Smart? Hmm? Fair smart. Yeah, tell him to eat a hole in that safe and get me those fingerprints, will you? Well, he's Mr. Chatterton, not Jimmy Valentine. Yeah, that's the heck of it. Baby! I'm crazy about you. Oh, Mike. Yeah, I'm not kidding either. No, oh, 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 that darn squirrel, he bit me, he bit me. That's all right, he woke me up, look. If Valentine knew his prints were in the safe, what would he do? Well, he'd crack the safe and get them. That he would, that he would, if he knew they were in the safe. Well, that he will, that he will, because I'll get my pop to tell him. Good. Well, what makes you think your father knows him? Because he gave the key to Pinky. Mickey told me he saw him do it. Your father gave... Sure. Don't you see? He must be protecting Valentine. Oh, look, kid, uh, let's just forget about the whole thing. Forget it. Sure, sure, it's, it's the DA's job, and... Well, it's your job, too. No, no, let's, let's just skip it. Not a chance. Pop's letting sentiment interfere with justice, and I'm going to force his hand. Yes, but it's not our job, Bonnie. Well, what if somebody else is killed? There's not much chance of that now. Remember those two perfectly decent people who expected to be alive today? Remember Pinky and Ludy? Sure, but... Well, either you trap Valentine tonight, or I'll take the police there myself. Okay, okay, I'll be there. And me, too? Both of us? All right. I'll send Mousy for you. I'll be outside of your house tonight in a car at 11 o'clock. Check? Check. man was in a hurry. And how? So am I. Roll him. Huh, straight ahead, Mousy. Hey, you're going the wrong way. That's right. The boss told me to go round the bow. What are you talking about? Turn back. Not a chance. Now, it's the boss's orders. Will you quit stalling and turn this car around? Now, look. You know, you've been getting in the boss's hair. And Miss Cleo's fed up, too. And just for tonight, I'm going to give him a break. Oh, you're lying. Wait a minute. Why, he's framing me. Why, he got me to go to work on my pop, and I did. I'll see you saw him leaving. Oh, sure, sure. Well, the boss told me you were going to squawk, but I don't care. <laughs> you bet I will. <laughs> Why, well, I set that trap single-handed for Valentine. And that double-crossing, that two-timing. Why, what, what does he uh, think he is doing? What's with Valentine? Only that he'll be robbing the police safe right now, maybe. And Mike will be there to land him all alone. Oh, Mousy, please turn back. Well, sure, kid, sure. I ain't gonna let nobody double-cross nobody. Oh, you're a pal. <laughs> yeah.
to Valentine, I presume. Ten thousand dollars on the hoof. That's all you want, isn't it, Jason? You won't need these fingerprints. Those aren't autographs I collected. No, they're not. They're bombshells in the lives of a lot of people who've worked hard to live down their prison records. Don't give me that. You came here to steal your own prints in the hope of beating a murder rap. You're still a pretty smart crook. I've been a crook. I've never been a murderer. You can't prove that. Maybe not. But I've got to prove one thing to five human beings. If the honest decency they build won't crash down on them through me. I'm your man. Let's, let's give them a break. Destroy their fingerprints. You keep mine. Valentine, I used to call you a gentleman cracksman. I call you a gentleman. Johnny Mason, convicted of manslaughter, state prison, 1923 to 1926. Now known as Charles Stanley. Ben Hopkins, convicted of forgery, state prison, 1924 to 1930. Chief of Snow. Jimmy Valentine. Convicted of robbery, 1908 to 1913, state prison. Now known as Tom Forbes. Hop! Hop! Bonnie. You knew this. You know it this afternoon, night. When we were... Bonnie, let us say. What good will it do now? You've got what you came for. And you used me to get it. You even... They'd love to me to make me trap my own father. Listen, Bonnie. $10,000 is more than 30 pieces of silver, isn't it? Stop it. Let me think. You don't have to, boss. You've done your part. You did just what I wanted you to do. You led me to Jimmy Valentine. That's all I'm after. Bossy, you can't. You're crazy. Don't get in my way. I killed Pinky and a girl because they got in my way. And I'll kill anybody that keeps me from getting Valentine. Why do you want to get me? My old man was Scarlatti. Tony Scarlatti. Tony Scarlatti? Yeah. Tony was my friend. That's a lie. You double-crossed him, and that's why he burned. I didn't double-cross your dad. I've never double-crossed anybody. You'll never get away with it, Marcy. You'll be caught. Don't you want to live? I've never lived yet until now. What's the difference whether I live 30 seconds or 30 years? Right now, I'm living. Get out of my way. Stay out of this, Jason. Get out of my way. Stop it, boss. Stop it. I don't want to give it to you. Don't pull no tricks on me. There's nobody behind me. Am I slipping? So now I'm nobody. I know. Anyway, it's, it's more better this way. I only would have ended up like a my old man in a chair. Didn't you never notice, boss? I never sat down in chairs very much. That's because I was always, uh, what do you call it, allergic to chairs. Crazy little mousey. And so ends a wave of crime unparalleled in the annals of Fernville. But we will now take you for the concluding chapter in this greatest of all manhunts. Go ahead, Cleo Arden, in Fernville. Who is Jimmy Valentine? That secret has been locked within one man just as securely as though he wore a tight zipper on his conscience. It won't be long now, folks. And there goes the district attorney examining the fingerprints of six men. One of them must be Jimmy Valentine. Number one. No record. Two. 
And three. No record. Four. Five. No record. Number six. Jimmy Valentine. Convicted of robbery. State prison. 1908 to 1913. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. And here's Mike Jason, who tracked down the master criminal, ready to expose him. All right, Jason. Whose fingerprint is number six? These are the fingerprints of Pinky Dolan, the man who was killed trying to get this clipping from the files of the Gazette. I took it from his body. Well, that's right. I saw him take it. I'd like to call on Carl James, please. Warden of the State Penitentiary, where Valentine paid his debt to society. Can you identify this man? Come, Warden. Whom do you see? It's Jimmy Valentine, all right. Thank you, Warden. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. With the conclusive proof that the deceased Pinky Dolan was Jimmy Valentine, the makers of Titus Zippers cheerfully pay $10,000 to Michael Anthony Jason. Oh. Thanks very much, folks. Warden, I happen to know that you have a pet charity, a way of giving men a leg up when they leave your, uh, well, shall we say, hospitality. I want you to put this in the kitty, in the name of a man who didn't disappoint you, Jimmy Valentine. Thank you. Mike, I, I, Miss Arden, well, I can't let him go like this. I Forget it, kid. He's going back to New York. Oh, I know. That's why I wanted to tell you something. What is it? Look after him. You've got to. You know, he's clever, but... Well, he's also kind of dumb. And make him save his money. Make him work hard, too. Bet I will. Will you please stop tossing me around like a bean bag? Shut up, please. You see, Mike, you're very clever, but you somehow never grew up. Oh, cut it out. Well, somebody's got to look after him. Maybe... Well... Maybe you ought to marry him. You think I should? Well... Maybe. Whoops. Whoops. One of them got away. I'll tell you what you do, kid. You talk this over with that squirrel friend of yours, and he'll tell you. Heels a bad company. I've been talking to him all morning, and he didn't say one word against you. I think that squirrel's nuts. Wait a minute. If I'm taking candy from a kid, I want to give her an even break. Look, Brad, you've been a pretty good sport about this. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll toss you for it. Oh, now, wait a minute. What is this, a turkey raffle? Exactly. Okay, kid, I'll call it. Heads, he stays here. Tails, I get him. Well, son, she's got you. Here you are, Buttercup. Wedding present for you. Wait a minute, that's my car. Well, I gotta get something out of this, haven't I? Yonder there goes a lady. A lady as ever was. <laughs> 